Hi there, let's get right to it, shall we? There are five steps to building an activity with Activity Builder. Create the activity, add questions for the student to answer, change the global settings for the object inventory assorted controls and objects, change the settings for individual objects in the scene, test and publish your activity. But first and foremost, it's important to know that the Activity Builder is a feature only available when logged in as a teacher. If you're logged in on a student account, you won't be able to use Activity Builder. All right, step one, creating the activity. Here, we basically set the scene for the activity. From the inventory, we can place objects that we want to appear in the scene when students open the activity, set any values that we want to be assigned to objects, whether it's force values, measured here in newtons, or mass values, measured in kilograms. On to step two, let's add some questions. So we'll open the activity builder by clicking on this icon that looks like three columns of three stacked blocks each. And if what I said makes no sense to you, just know that it's, it's this icon. All right, and just a side note, when the activity builder is open, we can't move objects in the scene or add new objects to the scene, which is why we create the scene in the previous step. But if we want to change the scene, simply click on test here to return to the activity setup. See, now you can move stuff around. All right, back to adding questions. Oh look, a button that says add a question. Let's click that. Now we can type a question in the text field here. We can select what kind of answer we want. Answer with text, or answer with a screen cap, or both, or neither. Now you're thinking, neither? Yes, neither, because you can also use the question field to provide instructions to the students instead of questions if you'd like. Now down below we have the option to add hints, and students can choose whether or not to see the hint when they're in the activity. Each hint is displayed separately. Once we're done with the question form, we'll click Save. Now we're ready for step three, which is where we can change the global settings. And that basically means we can set limits on inventory, controls, and objects overall. This is a feature that allows us to override default behaviors of objects in the scene to better suit our activity if we want. So we'll click on the inventory heading to expand the list of options. Different applications may have different options. To restrict the quantity that the student can select, type a number in that objects field. If we leave the field blank, the quantity is unlimited. So be careful with that, or not, depending on what the activity is. Side note, the inventory quantity does not include the objects we already placed in the scene. The application may also include options to hide entire categories of objects. For those settings, check the box if you want to hide the categories. Click on the controls heading to expand the list of options. These options generally apply to actions on the control bar, but they will vary depending on the application. Another side note, we can test our progress at any time by clicking on the test button here. We will need to reopen the activity builder when we're ready to recommence building the activity. All right, and now we're on to step four, where we change object settings. This applies to individual objects we've placed into the scene. So we'll click an object in the scene. Its name appears on the object settings window here. So we'll be sure to click on any subheadings for the object so that we can review all of our options. Then check the desired settings or enter numeric values into the text fields. Now we're on to step five. Here we can test and publish the activity. So let's click the test button. The activity builder window closes. If we wrote any questions or instructions, the questions dialog appears. When we are ready to publish the activity, we'll reopen the activity builder by clicking on the icon up on the control bar. Then we click the publish button. Enter the activity name and the category for the activity. The categories will appear on the main screen menu as a way to organize the activities. And now this activity appears on your students' screens. 